In this video I'm going to talk to you about heat engines and how to define a block diagram of an engine. And this is going to be a very basic high level introduction into you know, heat transfer and thermodynamics. But it's very important because for you to understand how an engine works, you have to understand how the heat's flowing in and out of an engine and how the work the engine does work. From this diagram, you're going to be able to understand uh, some very basic equations dealing with the heat flow in and out of an engine and also how to define the efficiency of an engine. So this this little diagram here is going to be a key for you to understanding heat engines. So before I even get into the diagram here, I'm going to just a I want to ask a few questions here. What is what does an engine do? I mean, what's the whole point of having an engine? Well, an engine an engine will basically uh, perform work. And what is work? I mean, we say that as a general term, but what does that mean in terms of an engine? We want it to perform work, okay? So, but what exactly does that mean? Well, it, when we're talking about uh, a force, we say that the work is the dot product of the force times the displacement, right? Whatever that is, okay? And that's going to give us something in terms of joules, right? Joules. Okay, so those are the units of work. Okay, the change of energy gives us the work or a force times the distance. So the important thing here is that we're talking about uh, you have to move some distance. So if we have an engine, in this case, the, the distance that it's going to move is going to correlate to volume. So in the case of work, we're going to have a change of volume in a piston or a closed container. We're going to have a change of volume. And that change of volume is going to change the distance that a piston will move, and that's going to drive the car. So the, so the change of volume creates a displacement. <laughs> and, that, and that displacement can, you know, move, it can, it can do many things. It can uh, move a car. It can um, run run a a generator. It could run a pump from the ground. I mean, I'm just giving examples of what it could do. Run a pump. Okay. So by that by that happening, when work happens, we're able to to get something physical out of that. And so, so, you know, that, that's the whole point of an engine, right? That's the whole point of an engine. Well, how does that happen? Well, when we're talking about an engine here, I'm going to talk to you about an engine here, and I'm going to define uh, my system here. Let's call this black. This is my system. And this is my environment out here. And I have to define a frame of reference, okay? So my frame of reference is going to be from the inside of my system, okay? When I'm talking about thermodynamics. So if I can get this system to somehow expand outward like this, right? If I can get it to expand, then I can get it to do work. I can get the volume to expand. I can do positive work. So if this volume expands, I'm going to do positive work from this vantage point of the system, okay? From the vantage point of the environment, it's doing negative work because it's compressing the environment, right? So whatever is expanding from a whatever vantage point, like say you're inside here, you're doing positive work. Let's imagine that you're pushing, let's imagine your arms are really long like this and your legs are long, okay? And you're pushing on the outside of this container. Let's give you some hair. There you are, okay? You're pushing on this container to make it expand. You're doing positive work. That's the whole idea here. And so you want this expansion and then that expansion can be used to do things like move a car, run a generator, run a pump, whatever you want it to do. That's how you do it. So how do, how do we get that work? How do we how does that even happen? 
remember it has to move it has to, it can't just sit there and you know not move if it doesn't move you're not going to do work so i'm just going to erase this for a second cuz we're going to come back to this diagram here anybody have an idea how would i get that system to expand how would i do that well to answer your question i have to add something to that system so i'm going to use different colors here i'm going to make this a red arrow first i have to add something to that system what am i going to add to that system okay i am going to add something called heat which is the letter Q okay and this Q I'm gonna call it QH because it's coming from a hot reservoir okay so this is heat and honestly the topic of this section is really about heat engines okay so if I go back up here I should have said block diagram of an engine and we could have said just put this here heat engine okay So going back down here, all right, so I have to add something to the system, right? So what happens when we add heat to the system? Well, two things can happen. The temperature could go up or it could expand, right? All right, so if I add heat, what could happen in here? I could have two things happen in here. I'm going to do this in green, whatever's inside here. Well, yeah, let's do green. I could either have an increase of the temperature. We're going to learn later. I'm, I'm just defining the first law of thermodynamics for you. Or I could have an increase in volume, you know, it, it, could, it could expand, right? Okay. Well, if we have an engine, like an ideal engine, what we really want here is we want all of that energy to go to just increasing the volume, okay? So when I add that in there, when I add that, that in there, okay, I want to try to increase that volume, right? I want to try to do some work. So here's my system. And, let's, and we know that when I'm expanding this way, right? that I'm going to end up doing work, right? Um, in reality, the temperature does it is going to change. We don't get a, a total isothermal process, but let's just pretend like all of this heat is going to go to expand it, okay? Let's just make a magical engine here, okay? We're going to learn later that magical engine is called a Carnot cycle, but up for now, I'm just going to use ideal conditions here. So I'm going to clone this. What am I going to get out of that? Well, I'm going to get something out of that. And we're, we're going to call that something here. We're going to call that work. And I'm going to make continue to make my work. I'm going to make it green here. So we're going to call this my work that I get out of the system. Okay, here, work. This is my work. So the whole point of adding a flame to that thing, right, to adding some fire, to adding some Q, right, is to get, to get it to expand, to do some work, right? But unfortunately, we cannot get all of this heat to perform the work. Even if this is an isothermal process, it doesn't. I can't get it to, to get all of that heat to transform it to work. It just doesn't work that way. I mean, it's it's it. You ca you can't get all of the energy to go into the work. So unfortunately, you're going to lose some of that. And I'm going to change the color here. I'm going to make this purple. Now nah, let's make it blue. To make it cold. You're going to lose some energy. And that's going to go to a cold reservoir, okay? And we're going to call that QC. My Q is not looking the best there, but let's just pretend that it does. And uh, this is going to go to the uh, this is going to go to the uh, cold reservoir. So this heat going out, uh, it's going to a cold reservoir. Now, there's other terms for this. Sometimes we call this, you know, just for clarification here. Let me, I'll add it down here. Sometimes we call this the heat added. And then sometimes we call this down here the heat rejected. Or sometimes we call this up here the heat N. Sometimes we call this down here, say rejected. We say the heat out. Either way, it's 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 the same thing. This and this one was coming from from the hot reservoir. If I just kind of keep them all consistent here. 
reservoir. Okay. They're all kind of the same concept here. There's heat coming from a hot reservoir up here, coming into this system. It's going to cause it to expand. It's going to do work. But all of that heat added or that heat in is not going to go to the work. Okay, we're going to try to get as much of it as possible, and we don't we want as le least of it as possible to change the temperature in here. That's the whole idea. But even if we don't change the temperature and we perform as much of it as possible to work, all of it to work is possible. As much of it to work as possible, we're still going to get some that wasn't able to to perform the work, and that's going to go out to the cold reservoir, and that's going to be called heat rejected, or that's the heat out of the system. Okay. So we have a real common term for this in your car. This is called your tailpipe, right here. Okay. So let's t let's see if we can get some equations off this chart. I think there's th there's some pretty um, pretty simple ways that we can look at this diagram and get information from it. So here's my QH. So we're going to make an equation from whatever's going in is going to equal whatever's going out. Does that make sense? Whatever's going in is going to equal whatever's coming out. So from this, I'm going to be able to say QH, whatever's going in, is going to equal whatever's coming out. So what comes out? Well, I got work and I've got the QC that's rejected. So I've got work plus my QC. Okay, so there's a very basic equation of thermodynamics right there. Of an engine, QH equals work plus QC. So from this diagram, you were able to define an equation. It just makes perfect sense. We have conservation of energy. That's all that this is saying. The energy is not created or destroyed. Okay, so this is this is important. In other words, and there's no there's no friction in the example I gave here. I'm not talking about friction. Back for the next video in this series, and. We're gonna, I'm going to teach you how to find the efficiency of a heat engine using this simple block diagram. Soon. All right, that's all I've got for you now. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.